There's a saying in the world of business and marketing, the riches are in the niches. See, so many people are getting into business today and that's for a good thing, right? The barrier to entry has never been lower, right? Becoming an entrepreneur right now is easier than it has ever been. But one of the most common struggles that a lot of people encounter is really that first step, right? When they're getting ready to start a business, they have trouble choosing and defining a niche. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about some very practical uh, guidelines that you should look at when choosing a niche. Now, choosing a niche is challenging because it kind of creates and in, 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 in has us experience these two sort of psychological barriers. Number one, right, when, when people go to choose a niche, they have a hard time because they feel like it's limiting them. They think that by choosing and serving maybe just one audience, it's preventing them from being able to serve and work with other people. The second thing is, is that they fear choosing the wrong niche, right? There's thousands of niches available, there's thousands of industries, but you know, what if we choose the wrong one, right? That's a, that's a big psychological sort of hurdle that a lot of people have to overcome. And the reality is, is that you know, choosing a niche uh, is, is difficult because it's like with the skills and, and the experience that we have, we could go out and we can serve a lot of different people in a lot of different industries, but I'm gonna explain why that is the wrong move early on in your business journey because when it comes to going out and producing an organization and producing content, producing sales, producing marketing, if you go too broad, you don't end up speaking to anybody. So let's talk about why this is important, why that matters, and really let's look at the four key areas, the four guidelines when it comes to choosing a niche. So the first criteria that you want to consider is choosing a niche where you as an individual can provide the most value. And so what does that mean? Providing the most value means what are the key areas where you have the most skills and the most experience? Because understand that when you're coming into business, there's already gonna be a ton of competition regardless of the industry or the niche that you choose. So if you're going into a niche where you have skills and experience, you're gonna be much more likely to find success sooner. Whereas if you go into a niche that maybe sounds interesting or attractive where you don't have the value to, to provide. For example, if you are, let's say, I don't know, let's say your experience is in construction and you have a lot of experience in, in that industry, but you want to then go in and get into the graphic design industry, right? It's like there's already tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of graphic designers out there who have been in the game of graphic design for years, who are already established in that industry, who, right, are already um, doing well in graphic design. And so for you to have to totally change from your experience in construction to graphic design, that ramp up period is gonna take quite a while, right? And so in the game of business where there's a lot on the line, there's a lot of risk, potentially overhead, responsibilities, all those things, like the ability to ramp up in graphic design for six months or a year, like that could potentially set you back to where you, know, you may end up failing. And so understanding as an individual, where is your experience lie and where does your value lie? And first and foremost, choosing a niche where there's alignment between your skills and the value that you can provide. The second thing that you want to consider is that you want to go after an industry that is easy to target. That means you want to go after an industry where you can get your message and content in front of the decision maker relatively easily. See, if you have a difficult time getting your content in front of the decision maker, then understand that it's also going to be difficult for them to find you. And so it's going to be more of a challenge to make sales and bring on new clients. And so going after a niche that is easy to target is going to give you the, the ability to scale out your content through whether it's through organic uh, or specifically through ads to be able to target a specific audience or group of people and get your message in front of them easily, right? That's going to lower your cost per acquisition. You're going to have to spend less when it comes to marketing um, or overall just sales. And so you want to go after an audience that is easy to target. 
The third thing that you want to consider is that you want to go after a market that's growing. If a market isn't growing, then the long-term potential of building a business in that industry um, has more risk. So you want to go after a market that's growing. And the fourth guideline when it comes to choosing a niche that you want to consider is that you want a market in pain. See, understand that when people buy something, it's because they're in some level of pain. And so if you're going after a market that doesn't really have uh, some sort of pain that they're trying to get out of, then it's going to be much more challenging for you to try to sell them a solution. So think of it this way, right? Like people who are in back pain will do and try absolutely anything to escape that pain. So going into an af going after a niche that has a high level of pain that they're trying to get out of or escape is always going to make it easier to sell versus getting into a market that doesn't really have any pain and let's say you're trying to sell maybe some sort of novelty product, right? A novelty product doesn't necessarily have an audience that's in pain, it's gonna be kind of like a random one-off purchase. Now, of course, the size of the audience like matters, right? You can, oftentimes with e-commerce, you can scale out a novelty product to millions of people, whereas you know people who have back pain are maybe more limited, but understanding the difference there and understanding that at the end of the day, if you are building a business based off of these criteria, you're gonna be much more likely to be successful. And so selling to people who are in some sort of pain and trying to get out of it is always a good idea. And then one of the last things to consider is you want to go after an audience that has some sort of disposable income, right? If people don't have money, then it's going to be much more difficult to sell them, you know, a product or service. As an example, let's say, you know, you want to start a business helping people who don't have jobs you know, you want to help them tighten up their resume. Well, it's a massive market, right? It's like most people don't have good resumes or could use resumes that could use, you know, tightening up. But the reality is, is that, you know, those people don't have jobs. And so they probably don't have the income to freely go out and just pay to get their resumes made, maybe especially at the price point that you want to offer. Whereas, let's say if you were you know, targeting, let's say, a, you know, business or a niche that was, let's say, seniors who were in some sort of pain, seniors, generally speaking, have more disposable income. And so thinking about it like that in terms of like, who is the audience that I want to go for? Where are they at? Right? Is this growing? Are they in a level of pain? And, you know, do they have the disposable income to be able to, you know, pay me what I'm worth? so to speak. And so these are some of the things that you want to consider when it comes to choosing a niche. Another thing I'll tell you is that although it might seem challenging, choosing a niche allows you from a sales and marketing perspective to truly dial in your messaging so that you're speaking to an individual person. Right, it's like if you decide to go broad and not choose a niche, it's like throwing you know, a mile long fishing net out into the ocean, but each of the holes in the fishing net are this big. So fish can swim right through. Yeah, you're talking to more people and you're maybe you know, capturing somewhat of a bigger audience, but the people who actually make it through that funnel is gonna be far, far less. Whereas if you're throwing a smaller net out, right, but the holes are tiny, it may capture quote unquote less people, um, or you might think it's gonna capture less people, but the people who get captured into that net, there's no way that they're gonna escape. And so ultimately, if you wanna serve more people, if you wanna make a greater impact, niching down is gonna be the way to go, especially in 2021, because consider the fact that, you know, as every day passes, more and more people are coming online, more and more people are getting into the online space, and you know, it's not like 2010, like every industry has specific niche experts. And so if you're going broad, then the reality is, is that the people who you could have served are going to be, you know, marketed to and sold to by people who speak very, very specifically and very directly to them. And so that's another reason why you want to niche down. So if you have any questions, comment below. Um, would love to engage with you and find out more about where you're struggling when it comes to finding or defining a niche. And maybe we can talk further about how we can help you with that.